Now, having legally enforceable rights um, isn't much use to you unless we know how to enforce them or what's required if we're going to enforce them. So this next little section deals with some of the really basic elements of court procedure. Procedure, You know, how you bring an action to court, who are involved in the court system, what do you have to prove in your case? In particular, we're looking to contrast a uh, criminal trial or a criminal prosecution between the Crown and a defendant and civil trials, which involve, as we've said before, a plaintiff and a defendant. Remember that the Crown prosecutes in a criminal matter because it's actually society um, uh, enforcing the law rather than a private citizen. Okay. And that was one of the reasons that we uh, undertook some of this classification work about laws earlier on uh, in this particular section of the course. In Australia, our court system is based on an adversarial system of justice. What happens is the two parties are completely responsible for the conduct of their own case. So they have to develop their own arguments and they have to decide what evidence they would like to see presented before the judge. This means that the actual trial and the process involved is a competitive one where the judge and the jury are looking to assess who has the best argument. So what's the uh, so who's likely to win um, based on the argument that they present? This means that the judge is far more of an impartial referee. What they're doing is actually making rules about law, particularly about the procedure and evidence. So um, what so evidence is about what can be presented to the court. Not everything can be presented to a court, right? Only certain kinds of evidence can be put as part of your argument. And the judge um, plays a particular role in deciding what can be in or what can be out of court proceedings. Also make sure that the procedure um, is followed. So it, it is really like a referee. You know, what are the rules? Making sure the rules are being applied consistently to both parties. This contrasts with uh, the civil law system in many other countries. In, in those systems, they don't actually have an adversarial system. They have an inquisitorial system of uh, justice. By inquisitorial, we mean that it's an inquiry to try and get through to the truth. So the judge is not so much an independent referee, but they're actually a government official, right? And that government official is participating in the proceedings. So they're much more of an investigator trying uh, to ask questions, find evidence to actually uncover the truth. So it's quite a different system of justice. If you were to walk into a courtroom in Australia, you'll see uh, many different people. Of course, there'll be the judges. As we said before, um, the judges are our impartial referee. Now, in some courts, you will see a jury, right? They are a panel of lay people. So it depends. If it's a criminal matter, there'll be 12. If it's a civil matter, um, so not a criminal matter, sometimes there are civil juries. It's, it's unusual, but sometimes there are. Um, there's generally six, although that number can vary, can be four, etc. for certain cases. You'll see lawyers, uh, lawyers are, are broken up into two kinds of lawyers, barristers and, and solicitors. So uh, think of it like a doctor, right? If you have a problem with your shoulder and you need s shoulder surgery, you'll often have a surgeon who's a specialist in an area. That's really what the barrister is, right? So the barrister is the person who presents your argument. Okay, so they speak speaks at the court. Uh, the solicitor is far more like the GP, your normal doctor. So your solicitors will be a normal lawyer and they can do everything. They uh, conveyance or, or help you buy a house, draw up your will. And then when you get in particular trouble, they point you to the right barrister and they, they do what's called briefing of the barrister. So the solicitor is like the normal lawyer who looks after your business. They brief the barrister who then uh, presents 
to the court. So they're the two kinds of um, uh, lawyers that we see, uh, both for the prosecution or for, or for the plaintiff uh, and for the defence. You'll also might see a, a judge's associate. Um, they're often a, a, an early career lawyers, maybe straight out of law school, and they, uh, they help the judge find cases and do research and stuff like that. And a court reporter, uh, because we have the doctrine of precedent, the actual record of the decision is really critical. So there's a court reporter there who is actually transcribing uh, what people are saying, etc., so that they can go back to it later. So there's a whole lot of people, um, actually, who we might see in a court procedure taking part in the proceedings. Let's take a very simple uh, case if, if Johnny wants to sue Kate to recover an unpaid debt. Okay, so K owes J some money. But what's happened is J promised, right, to waive the debt. What does that mean? He said, hey, Kate, you don't need to pay me. Okay. But then later he's reneged and says, actually, I want my money. Okay. So in this case, what can, um, what can Johnny do? As we will see uh, in a little bit, litigation isn't the only thing that Johnny and Kate can do. There are alternative dispute resolutions that may be a far more cost-effective way, particularly for an individual level debt like, like this, which is probably at the lower level. In terms of court procedure, we're just going to deal with some basics, whether there'll be a jury and what it will be, the burden of proof and the standard of proof. Now, if Johnny wants to sue Kate to get his money back, this is actually a civil action, not a criminal action, as you'd imagine. Otherwise, the state would be involved. Johnny is called the plaintiff and he has the burden of proof. So he has to prove Kate owes the money. Kate doesn't have to prove she doesn't owe it. The standard of proof is the balance of probabilities. So really what we're saying is it's more likely than not. So Johnny has to show that it's more likely than not that Kate owes the money. If it were a criminal action, the Crown as the prosecution has the burden of proof, so you don't have to prove your innocence. The Crown has to prove your guilt. And the standard of proof changes. It's beyond a reasonable doubt, right? So that there's no reasonable other explanation for what happened other than you were guilty. Okay, so that's quite a much higher standard. So that's why it's important to understand what kind of case am I involved in? What's the standard of proof? If I'm going to bring an action, I have the burden of proof of establishing my case. So as we've just said, onus or burden of proof is on the person who, who brings the case, right? They've got to prove their case. The standard of proof is going to vary. In a civil case, balance of probabilities, criminal, criminal case, beyond reasonable doubt. Now, the role of a judge can actually vary, um, and it depends whether there's a jury or not. And we've been through pre in a previous slide when we'll have a jury and when we won't. Um, sometimes even the courts, uh, if the defendant agrees in criminal matters, can decide not to have a jury. Okay. So courts face two key kinds of questions, questions of fact and question of law. See, so a question of law might be, uh, is this evidence admissible okay so that's that's a that's a question of law not a question of fact so just say Kate um, uh, Johnny says Kate wrote a letter saying that she owed the money so what we have is a letter now the question is is that letter admissible that's a question of law however just say Kate says I didn't write it Right? She says, that's a forgery. I didn't write it. That is actually a question of fact. Did Kate write the letter or not? And that's a very different question to, is the letter admissible as evidence? Okay. So a judge, if there's a jury involved, a judge makes decisions about law. So the judge decides, is the letter admissible? Then the jury, 
right, decides questions of fact. A jury would decide, did Kate write it or not? Okay. And remember, in a civil case, on the balance of probabilities, did Kate write the letter or not? Okay. Now, if there's no jury, then the judge makes both these decisions. And that is, um, that is uh, often the case. Okay, so just say we've had our particular case and one of the parties isn't happy. If one of the parties isn't happy, they can appeal the decision to a higher court in the hierarchy. That provides up a method of review which is necessary for natural justice. So if Johnny isn't satisfied or, or if Kate isn't satisfied, then either can appeal the decision. The person who appeals, so if Johnny decides to appeal, they then get called the appellant and the other party is respondent, right? So the terminology uh, changes, gets added on that the person appealing, bringing the case becomes the appellant. Again, they're bringing the case, so they've got to establish their case, um, if it's a civil case, on the balance of probabilities. Uh, and the respondent then um, just needs to um, respond to the appeal. Now, we mentioned that we might have a jury, and we've covered some of these facts before, but a jury is really there to make sure that questions of fact right, are determined by a group of the defendant's peers. They're often, they're, well, they are randomly selected from the electoral roll. So if you're on the electoral roll, if you can vote and you're a citizen, you can be called up for jury duty. And if you're called up, you have to go. It's compulsory. Now, that said, there are some exceptions when you, can, when you can get off jury duty. Let's not go into those details, but as a general principle, if you're, an, if you're a citizen of a society who can vote in Australia, um, you are expected to go on and serve on jury duty if, if required. Now, just because you're summoned for jury duty doesn't mean you'll end up on a jury. When you get there, either side um, can ask you questions to see whether they think you'll be impartial enough to be on the jury. So the juror, maybe the potential juror, can be challenged by either parties in the trial. Normally, there'll be 12 jurors in a criminal trial and six uh, in a civil trial, although again, that number can vary and not every criminal trial has a jury. And so that's some of the very basic elements of uh, court procedure.